This brief presentation will discuss how to conduct a literature review for nursing research and evidence-based practice. This presentation will describe the purpose and steps for conducting a literature review. Literature reviews are the most important step for conducting research and evidence-based practice. As shown in the image, collecting evidence and critically appraising that evidence are necessary steps before deciding if you're conducting an EVP project or designing a research project. The purpose of a literature review is to gain an understanding of what is known about a specific topic and also what is not known, also known as a gap in the literature. With a thorough literature review, you can come to a conclusion about the current state of the science and some of the similarities and differences about a topic. Importantly, a literature review will help you narrow your topic and help you tighten your research or PICO question. There are several steps to conducting a literature review and the process is not linear, it's a cycle. The first step is to ask a research or PICO question so that you can come up with keywords and concepts. Once you have your keywords and concepts, you can search the literature, which may include journal databases, books, abstracts, or even dissertations. The literature you find can then be critically appraised, evaluated, and synthesized. Then you may decide you need to revise your research or PICO question. And if so, you will begin the process again. More detail about these steps are described in the next few slides. Step one is ask your research or PICO question. You can refer to a previous presentation entitled, How to Formulate Your Research or Evidence-Based Practice Question for more information. We can use this example here. In black women with uncontrolled hypertension, is a medication self-management smartphone app effective compared to no intervention in improving blood pressure control at 12 months? This question may evolve as a result of your literature review as described previously, but this is quite common. Formulating the question helps you get focused and started to search the literature. Next is developing your search strategy by identifying the keywords and concepts within your research or PICO question. It's a good idea to come up with about two to four concepts for your research or PICO question. The table here shows an example. If we use the PICO question stated in the previous slide, keywords would be black woman, hypertension, smartphone, and self-management. We can also use African-American woman as another keyword for concept one. We can also use blood pressure as another keyword for concept two. We can use M Health as another keyword for concept three. And self care management can be another keyword for concept four. Now that we've developed our keywords, we can use them to start searching resources. Examples of resources are PubMed or Web of Science. The main words used to connect your terms are and, or, and not we can connect black women and hypertension. Using and will only retrieve black women and hypertension as shown in the blue section of the first image. We could use or, and this would retrieve black women, hypertension, and both. We see that the entire two circles are highlighted in blue. We could also use the word not. Using not will retrieve only black women and exclude those with hypertension or both black women with hypertension. This is shown in the blue highlighted circle. Once we have our literature, we can now critically appraise the literature, evaluate it and synthesize it. Critically appraising the literature will determine the clarity and rigor of the study. For example, is an objective or PICO question clearly stated? Are the methods and approach section detailed? Are the results clear and do they align with the objective or research and PICO question? To evaluate the literature, we look for patterns among the studies. Are there a number of randomized controlled trials, systematic reviews, and meta-analyses? Or are there a number of qualitative studies and descriptive studies? 
This tells you how robust the evidence is about a specific topic. It will also tell you if you can conduct an EBP project or if another research study is needed. With the articles that you have found, you can synthesize it next. You will pull out key information about the studies to produce a summary or snapshot of the current evidence or state of the science. You can also determine the impact on outcomes. As mentioned previously, you may need to repeat the literature review cycle. Your literature findings may tell you that you need to revise your research or PICO question. If this is so, you would then repeat the literature review cycle again. Thank you.